everyone. It's Kristen from Swagger Magazine. And today we are joined with our cover star, Sean Desmond. How's it going? Hi. How are you, Kristen? I'm well. It was fun shooting with you the other day. So much fun. When do I get to see these photos? Hello. Um, I'm going to have to send Mark a little uh, nudge. <laughs> soon, though. No, soon, I promise. You know, I feel like we have so much to cover. You're so incredible and you have such an amazing story. You've kind of, you know, returned to music. You took a little bit of time off in 2015 and now you're back. I want to talk to you a little bit of your career as a whole, but let's start with your return to music and how that right. came about. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've told this story so many times. It's like so crazy. So this summer, this past summer in July, I was contacted by a friend of mine that Drake had contacted him and told him that he was putting on this show and it was like part of the OVO weekend. And my my friend was like, you know, Drake personally wants me to invite you to perform at the show. And I was like, oh, yeah, that would probably be cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, tell him I'm in. I'll do it. No problem. So that happens and then the show is announced and I get a call from Jamie at Wax Records and he's like, hey man, what are you doing about this show? I said, what do you mean? I'm going, I'm doing the show and then that's it, right? He's like, man, you cannot do that. If there was ever a chance that you were going to come back and make music again, this is it. Like this is huge. Drake asked you to perform at this show, right? And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. He's like, well, listen, I'm going to set up a whole bunch of press around it. We're going to make this a big deal. You know, I'm just doing this because I love you and I want you to have a great show and I want you to win. Okay, cool. So we start doing this, the press around the show and day, day of the show comes and I'm doing a bunch of stuff. And I actually, before that, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Okay. A couple of days after... I was like, you know what? I'm going to blow the roof off of history, which was where the show was, the venue. People don't know that I'm going to blow it. I am going to, it's going to be crazy. I start rehearsing for the show. I'm like in front of a mirror here. And my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm rehearsing. She's like, for what? I'm like, I need to like know when I get up there what I'm doing, right? So now day of the show comes. And I'm doing all this press and I'm saying that I'm going to murder this show. I'm going to blow the roof off of that place. They have no idea what's going to hit them. So go on stage and the place erupts. It goes crazy. I was around for everybody else's performances, but like for mine, it was kind of hard for me to kind of hear what was going on because I have in-ear monitors in. So like I'm listening to myself, not really listening to the crowd, but after the fact and looking back at videos and looking at Instagram, you know, posts from fans and whatnot were like, yo, when Sean Desmond came on, that place went crazy. The energy was like here and it just went woof, crazy. So I come off stage. The show goes amazing. I come off stage and during the show, I could see Drake in the balcony on my right from the corner of my eye. And after every song, he's going nuts. He's banging the wall. I'm surprised he didn't bruise his hand. So I come off and I walk into this hallway because there was a green room but it was so packed and i just come off stage i'm like i just need to like go collect myself so i'm like let's go in the hallway and that hallway was led to the balcony where drake was standing so i'm standing in the hallway he comes through the door and grabs me and pulls me aside he's like yo man come here for a sec i was like yeah what's up dude he's like yo he's like sean desmond you're different eh bro and i said what He's like, yo, you're different, eh? And I'm like, Drake, I don't know what that means. You need to explain what you're saying to me. And he's like, dude, did you, did you hear those people? They love you, man. Those songs, even the ones from 20 years ago, they live on. They're living forever. They're timeless. What are you doing? And I'm like, really? I'm kind of doing nothing, Drake. I, I stepped away because I just, I hated everything about the music business. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I get that. Scratch that. But he's like, yo, he, these people need you, man. Sean Desmond needs to make music again. And I'm like, oh, man. Jamie's telling me. Now Drake is telling me. I may have to take this serious, right? So next day, my phone. And I'm not, Chris, I'm not talking like, yeah, lots of Instagram messages. and But emails and texts from people in 
the industry, heads of Spotify, heads of Apple Music, yo, we were at the show. You blew us all the way. Is there new music coming? To get that after so long of not doing anything, it was... I, st I can't believe it. I still get emotional talking about it. And this was in July. Um, it, was, it was really, really special. So I start working on music. And we're doing a bunch of stuff. Nothing seems to be hitting. And one day I'm at soccer practice with my son. And funny, I had written a version of Maniac in 2014. So... I'm like, but I never put it out because that's when everything just kind of went to shit, if I'm being completely honest. So I send that to Jamie and he texts me right away. He's like, yo, this is a smash of this chorus. Holy shit. Like, what is this? And I'm like, Jamie, I had written this song, you know, six years ago. Nothing happened. He's like, oh, okay, we need to revisit this. This is really special. So, you know, a couple of weeks go by, we do some work and then we finish it and it's like, wow i think we have the song i think we got the record to come back with and i'm like i agree so we put it out and i do this show the night before the release at the rivoli in toronto it's like packed house industry fans and this is the launch of of maniac and i get a message from drake the next day because i was at the airport heading to ottawa after the show the day of uh that maniac came out and he's like dude I am so happy that you listened to me that night and you didn't just let what happened happen and let it fizzle up. He's like, I can't wait to hear what you're doing. He's like, I'm in, it was his birthday that weekend. He's like, yo, if I was in Toronto, I would have, I would have pulled up to your show and showed you love, bro. Um, and like, I'm just so proud of you. I can't wait to hear what's next. And here we are. That's incredible. I literally got goosebumps when you said, you know, the song Maniac, that you had written it in 2014, and then all of this happened, and now it's out, and it's such a banger, by the way. Thank you. You have such a catalog. I was listening to your music uh, the, d the day after the shoot, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I forgot that he had this hit, and this hit, and this hit. Of course, there's a couple that stand out for me, because, like, Shook... Yeah. Is I just remember being, you know, a kid and, and a certain, you know, there's a certain nostalgia to certain songs that you have. But then 100%. looking at all of your body of work, it's like, oh, my God, I forgot about this song. And so I just it, it's really exciting and really exciting to to be someone who was a fan of yours back then. And and even in 2014 and whatnot. And then now I'm sitting here with you. It's it's just it's goosebumps all around. And. We're so excited, I have to say. Now, I want to ask you, like, what that meant to you with with Drake, you know, kind of co-signing you in a sense. What what did that mean to you? It's crazy because I'll, I'll go back to the show. So I show up at uh, at History that night, my wife, my three kids, and we get up to the green room and I see Drake and he sees me and he calls me over. This is before the show. So I go up and I'm like, yo, oh, man, thank you so much for inviting me. He's like, Sean Desmond, he's like, thank me. Thank you, bro. He's like, what you did, you know, before any of us. And I'm, I, I, I never thought of it like that, Kristen. Like, at the time, I was just a 20-year-old kid making music because I loved making music and performing and dancing. And that's what I was doing. I didn't think that these songs would really become staples and become, like, core memories for people. You know what I mean? And open doors. Like, I wasn't, I didn't think I was opening doors. You know, there were people before me that opened doors. Snow. Oh, my God. Like, so many of them. And so for him to to say that and to really be that supportive, it says so much, man. And, like, my kids were so excited. They get they got to meet him, to take pictures. He was so kind with, with them and with his time. It was really, really, really special. And now what Drake's saying, I'm having so many people say to me, like, oh, my God, these songs were my childhood thank God you're back. Don't ever leave us again. I'm like, Oh my God, I guess I did make an impact on people's lives with my music, you know, unintentionally it just happened. But to go back, yeah, it's 20 years of music. You know, last year was 20 years since my first album. And like you said, there's so many songs that you go back to me like, Oh my God. Oh my God. That was Sean. Oh my God. That was Sean. And I'm just so blessed. 
to be able to be here today, 20 years later, with a song on the radio, like Sean Desmond is on the radio again. It's it's mind blowing to me. Yeah. And it kind of in a sense, although I know for you, you know, you did leave for a bit. To me, it almost feels as if you were never gone. Everybody says so, that. It's crazy. I, I, yeah. it's, and it's cool to hear that, you know, even just what I'm feeling, other people are feeling, right? Yeah, so, it, yeah. which which totally, totally validates what you're doing. Now, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, like, what are you, I mean, I know that we kind of chatted a bit and I know, you know, some things are a little bit, I don't want to say secretive, but you can only give us so much of what you're working on right now. So what, mm -hmm. what can you tell me what you're working on at the moment? Well, What's literally... Upcoming? So upcoming, I mean, a bunch of shows in the summertime, summer festivals are coming in, starting to plan a fall tour, which I'm really, really excited about. I'm literally recording downstairs in my studio, like trying to figure out this, what this next song after Maniac is. Mm -hmm. um, got a couple of things in the works that I'm really, really excited about. And now I think we were talking about it on set as well. So I've been actually running a dance competition for 15 years. And so they start in March and go all the way till uh, May two for a long weekend. So pretty much during that time, I'm kind of, that's what I'm doing. It is like my baby. It's one of my passion projects. And I grew up dancing and competing and it just felt like something natural for me to do. And I love inspiring and watching kids dance. Like, I just love it. My daughter dances. My daughter's a competitive dancer. Um, I saw her on stage with you on TikTok. <laughs> she's she loves it like she loves it yeah like all the shows she's come to since <laughs> it's like dad are you gonna bring me up on stage dad are you gonna bring me up she is not shy I she is it. not scared like natural like she needs to be on stage she um, has the dad well and i know your wife's the dancer too so she has her exactly. parents jeans exactly exactly so that's kind of what's in the works right now and then hopefully some collabs I, there's some people i would love to work with who um who can we conjure up for the universe like who can we yeah who can we uh what, drake? what's the word uh oh my god like manifestation who can we manifest drake like i would love it it's funny because i kind of jokingly said that to him at ovo and he's like bro i'm here bro bro i'm here but it's like bro you're drake man yeah you could say that like but i think he's Come being on, genuine let's right? go let's go let's i know go. it would let's just have to started. be the right song it's good <laughs> it would have to be the right song right um I always said like Nelly Furtado because of the Portuguese thing with me and her. This new artist, Lu Kala, which I'm kind of like, I, I really dig in her stuff. But we'll see. What's meant to happen is going to happen. That's, I just leave it in the universe's hands. So, yeah. And, and I'm yeah. sure that, I'm sure that it will come. Now, I want to talk to you. We also talked about, you know, mental health and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's January. It's going to be February when, when we launch this. Why is it important for you to use your platform to speak about mental health? And, you know, did you have a journey yourself that kind of inspired mm. why? Absolutely. So back in 2015, uh, when I stepped away from music, I was just not in a good place. I'm not going to say I was suicidal or anything that deep or that serious, but I was depressed. I was sad. I was not happy. Um, and what started to happen was it started all that started to trickle into my marriage and like started to trickle into me to my ability to be a good dad. And so one day my wife was like, man, I think you, you need to go talk to somebody because I can't be with somebody like this. I don't want to be with somebody like this. And you know, our kids don't deserve it. So of course, and I'm like, well, I love my wife. I love my children. Maybe I do need to go speak to somebody. And honestly, Kristen, it was the best thing I ever did. I know there's this whole, and why I'm so such an advocate for it, because there's this whole stigma about men not being able to express their feelings or cry. Let me tell you, I've cried a lot since October and before that. And I cry in front of my kids. I cry in front of my wife. I'm not embarrassed, but it took a lot for me to get to that place. And honestly, just talking to somebody once a week, just about problems and about what I'm feeling and what I'm going through was huge. And so there was, I had this like one big epiphany with my therapist where he kind of like rolled up a piece of paper and he was like, okay, Sean, grab onto this other side, grab onto the other side of this paper. So I'm grabbing it and he's like, okay. He's like, I'm fear and I'm pulling you 
and right in front of you is this dark hole and you're going to fall. You're going to fall into that hole. You're going to lose your kids. You're going to lose your marriage. What are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. What do you want me to do? He's like, Sean, I am fear. I'm the fear of, you know, talking about your feelings and crying and all that. And I'm pulling you into this hole and you're going to fall and you're going to lose everything. What are you going to do with this fear? I'm like, honestly, doc, I have no idea. And he's like, just let go of the paper. He's like, all you have to do is let go. When you're scared, let go and just, he's like, remember that and just talk. And I was like, that simple little exercise, I was like, oh my God. And that's what I've been doing since. I mean, I try my best. Like if I am sad, I'm going to tell you I'm sad. If I'm happy, I'm going to tell you I'm happy. Um, and so I feel it is so, again, I just feel it's so important to use my platform because I know firsthand I have friends who have opened up to me and have reached out and been like, hey, you think you can give me your, that number to that that therapist? And I'm like, yeah, dude, what's what's happening? I'm not a therapist, but I'm a good listener. And I can give you my two cents and whatnot, but I'm not a therapist. So, and I've had also people online reach out to me. Thank you for doing this. I'm struggling. Thank you for being a voice. And thank you for showing that men... Uh, can have feelings and shouldn't bottle everything. But I wasn't brought up in a household. My parents were very loving. I was very loving parents. But we didn't come home and talk about our feelings. And what, like, it just wasn't a thing in my house. So that's why I felt I had to bottle everything and bottle everything. And then, we, but problem is when you do that, one day you explode, right? So yeah, that was kind of my episode with everything. So that's incredible. And I feel like uh, these days, it's more and more people are starting to actually open up and be like, hey, you know, I am having thoughts, whether they be, you know, one thing or another. And I'm sure that with social media, as great as it can be, I'm sure that kind of amplifies things too. So well, let me tell you, it's funny you say that, Chris, I'm just going to cut you off there for a second. No, that's okay. Social media is great. It also really sucks. I mean, you were big when social media was not a part of an artist's career. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. actually, I mean, if you want to, I'd love to hear a little bit on that note too, to yeah. expand of how that affected, how's it changed? You know, I, I'm so curious. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's that, right? And, but again, back to my social media is great. But like now, as an artist, we're in like the worst business for mental health because we see everything everybody is saying mm -hmm. i literally have to be like okay i gotta <laughs> put this thing down and i gotta walk away but i've honestly to me i'm too old for any of that I, like i don't let things get me personally because i know it's just whatever They're, they want me to say something back because it's exactly what they want they want me to feed into it which i don't i never do but honestly the support i've had like six buzz post about me twice narcissist like thousands of comments 99 percent always positive there's always that one guy that's got to just be a, a jerk right anyway so let's go back so yeah i'm from the era there's no social media right and now it's a full-time job <laughs> i honestly need to hire somebody because it is so time consuming that then add my daughter goes to dance twice a week. My son plays soccer three times a week. Lunches, school pickup, school drop off. I need to make music. I need to work on my dance competition. So like, just like finding the time to do it is so hard, but it's adapt or die, right? This is where we are in 2023, adapt or die. I mean, I try my best to stay on it, but also I do like like I did before the new year, just be like, okay, I'm going to cool down a little bit on social media because since the release of Maniac, crazy. It was nuts. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I need to pull it back a little bit and just like, now I need to work, right? But yeah, it's changed. The business has changed so much. And how about think about how people consume music? I come from the era where people were buying CDs. Me too. Me too. Yep. Like <laughs> I have like platinum plaques downstairs, like so, from sales. Yeah. No streaming, no nothing. You know, again, adapt. And But that is a beautiful thing. What I love about that now is because if you were in Germany, you wouldn't really, unless you went to a store and like really dug, you wouldn't find Sean Desmond. Where That's now, true. it's like five seconds, Sean Desmond. 
boom, my whole catalog shows up anywhere in the world. That is crazy. If yeah, if there's I, pros and cons, right? Yeah, I always say, I feel like if I was at the height of my career right now, it would be a whole different ballgame because the music is so accessible now. If you remember how big those songs were, Get Ready, oh, yeah. Shook, Let's Go, Night Like This, Electric, Shiver, like these were, nobody does like you, huge songs. Now imagine if streaming was the thing in those days and everybody in the world would listen to the, this, these songs, right? Yeah. I actually bought Shiver on iTunes. You know when like it, it was that crossover between yeah. you weren't really buying CDs anymore, but yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're doing on the iPods. I actually mm -hmm. I bought that one just as a single when it came out. I believe it. And streaming wasn't the thing yet. Like you couldn't exactly. there wasn't Apple Music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you though, you know, being a dad, so I know that you have a 14 year old, so I know that your oldest, you know, was around when you were still doing music but now that you have two more how are you kind of juggling being a dad and and being an artist with a growing expanding career yeah i mean it let me tell you it's not easy um and to add to that so my wife became pretty ill in 2017 which also added to like me having to step away for a longer time maybe than i wanted to or whatever so yeah i was like super dad right Honestly, I just need to, I literally have to, like where before I would say yes to everything, I literally have to say no to things now because I realize I can't do everything, right? The other thing too is I get up super early. So I get up at five, I'll get my workout in so that that's done. I'll come home about 7.15, get them up, get them dressed for school, lunches in the bags so that when I get home at, let's say, 8.30, I'm working, right? 8.30 to 2.30, I'm working. I'm making music. I'm emailing. I'm doing whatever I need to do at that point. And then the evening is really hard because every day it's something different. Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, soccer. Wednesday, dance. Thursday, soccer. Friday, Friday dance and soccer. Uh, Saturday, soccer game. It's a lot. But honestly, Chris and I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's being a father is amazing. And like molding these yeah. human beings into like what they're going to be is amazing. My kids are really, really uh, good kids. My oldest was just started grade nine. He was valedictorian, like principal's award, like just a smart kid. Like I don't have to worry about him. Yeah. Um, even my middle, my middle son, Owen, who's like my mini me looks exactly mm -hmm. like me at that age. Really smart, really good student. My daughter is just a diva. My daughter is just... <laughs> All these white hairs in my beard are because of my daughter. That's um, so funny. But like I wanted a little girl so bad. So like I'm so happy that we tried and like had a third child and had a little girl. But yeah, it's not it's not easy. But it's literally like saying no to things and like scheduling is everything. On days that I do have things where I'm not around, I got to make sure I have people to cover. I have an amazing family. My mom literally lives across the street from me. Like literally oh, across the love street. It. And my kids love their grandparents. Like my mother-in-law two minutes walk my sister-in-law two minute walk so i have a lot of support around which is yeah, which is really amazing. helpful yeah that's amazing has your wife been in any of your music videos she was a dancer in shook oh oh my god i love yeah. it yeah I if you watch obsessed. Shook, she's one of the, she's one of the principal dancers in that that's yeah. amazing so she yeah. and she's that means she's like an incredible dancer oh no know... she's she's a better dancer than i am like yeah 100 oh yeah yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so cool. I love it. Yeah. I love the two the two dancers. It's like a step up, but real life. <laughs> yeah, we met when we were twelve at the dance studio. Oh my gosh, that's so and amazing! I, you know, what? you want to hear something? And I say yeah, this I all do. the time, and people think I'm crazy. I remember walking in the first time for dance class, and she'd come out of another dance class, and I looked at her and I saw her, and I was like, in my head, I'm gonna marry that girl. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. And literally, we're married like thirty years later. That's incredible. No, I love yeah. it. And I love that you're such a family guy. I really do. I think that's amazing. And you, you're, you're such, you have such a great aura and I can already tell, you know, you're talking about your kids, how great they are. Doesn't shock me because if they're anything like you yeah. and I'm sure like your wife, they're, they're going to be wonderful people. So yeah, they, although they say I'm cringe sometimes. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think my parents are too. So I feel like that's just, <laughs> that's just a rite of passage for yeah, being yeah. a parent, right? Yeah, some so, some of my TikToks, my son is like, "Yo, dad, that's cringe." I'm like, "Owen, 
He's like, yo, bruh. I'm like, who are you, bruh? Who are you talking to, man? <laughs> That's so funny. So funny. Now, do you have a favorite song of yours from the past that kind of stands out to you as like, you're always hyped to play that song live? Oh man. I know it's hard. Uh, it's very hard. Because um, even me, I can't even really pick a favorite of yours. Like I can pick a few that I'm like, I remember this day, this time, and that's why it's so special to me. But you have so many songs that are fire. So so if you could just pick one that every time you're like, oh, this is next. Like we're playing this next. I'm I'm ready. Which one? I have to say, I what, picking one is hard, Kristen. So I gotta pick more than one. Okay, okay, okay. Shook is one. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is Night Like This. Yes, I love that song. Like that is that one song. where people go bonkers for. And then of course electric. Like when electric comes yes. on, the sexy, the sexiness of everybody comes out when electric comes on. I feel on. like those are probably my top of yours too. But then I also yeah. let's go. I just remember yeah. being at a grade eight party and like everyone's, you know, oh, oh we kind of want to dance with the guys, but everyone's all shy and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So it reminds me of that. Yeah. So good. And honestly, exactly. I'm loving Maniac right now. Like that's my jam. So like, good. And like, it feels so fresh. And it's funny because there's elements of that song that are reminiscent to your older stuff. But it's yeah, yeah, yeah. so incredibly current. Yeah. It sounds, it's like what Sean Desmond should sound like in 2023. Exactly. Right? I know that you kind of told me that it was going to be, there was going to be some nostalgic type, type elements, but do you have kind of a, let's say genre for what your new stuff's going to be? Like it's, it's pop, but also like hints of R&B because that's my, I don't know why my voice just lends itself so good to R&B. And I have this like stupid fast vibrato as well. People actually say, they say that The weekend sounds a lot like Sean Desmond. I, so, it's funny because I agree. I, I in was certain actually songs, thinking that. Do you remember? I feel it coming. Yes, I, I feel yes. it coming, baby. Totally, they were like, totally. we love that new Sean Desmond song. I was like, <laughs> that's not me. But it does, like, I can see yeah. what they're talking about. So. For sure. I can too. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some new music in the works, potentially some new shows happening nothing oh nothing no not potentially yet. those are happening okay okay good yeah. i wasn't sure if yeah. i was allowed to say <laughs> oh, yeah. perfect you have to let me know by the way because i i'm gonna be of there of course i'm gonna be there front row so i love it the last question that i have for you is what advice would you give to an artist who's struggling to find their place right now because i know that you i mean you've been there yeah i mean so again when i started and when Artists are starting now completely different, right? Of course. Um, there are so many outlets and ways for now to just get, you can record a song right here and put it on, put it out tomorrow. And so I feel like when I, when I talk to new artists and people reach out to me, I'm just like, listen, find your niche, find what it is that makes you different, makes you unique and build a fan base. Put your music out, put a song out every week, especially when you're a new artist and you have no fans, you got to be really consistent and like put, keep putting songs out, post Instagram videos, TikTok. Oh my God, TikTok, post TikToks because you just never know if and when something is going to take off, right? So they all get hung up on this. Oh, I want a major record deal. I want this. At, at the beginning, it's more important, especially right now, labels are like looking for artists who almost have a crazy stupid following already yeah, before they yeah. do anything yep. so build a fan base work on your craft perfect it take two years and like learn production learn how to record vocals because it's not hard but it's repetition you got to keep doing it you got to keep doing it don't let people influence your creativity do what feels right to you i had to learn that the hard way i know that now and i will never let anybody influence my creativity. I'm always going to do what feels right and what feels good and what my gut is telling me to do. The gut feelings and music, it's very special. 100%. You have a great team around you too, I have to say. Yeah, they're good people, man. Got to keep good people around you, man. Not yes men, like yes men or women, just good people that keep you grounded because it's very easy to get caught up in all the craziness. 
And you got to try your best not to get caught up. A hundred percent. And I just want to say thank you again. You know, like you're making my um, grade five dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much, Kristen. All right, well, thank girl. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was great. I can't wait to see everything.